Baptist Church and a nod to those places in scripture and in song and in story where faith or Jesus or the church are described as rock. On Christ, the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. Our Old Testament reading assigned for this morning is from the prophet Isaiah. The prophet tells the people who are seeking to follow God that as they are growing in their faith, when they need reminders of God's faithfulness, they should look to the rock from which they were hewn and the quarry from which they were dug. In ancient mythology and storytelling, men were referred to as rocks and women as quarries. So the prophet invites them, look to the rock, look to the quarry, and then goes on to say, look to Abraham and look to Sarah, who, when God called them, were childless and who feared they would never have any descendants despite God's Promises that their descendants would be as many as the stars in the sky. Now, how they came to have those descendants is a long and interesting story, but it started with God taking Abraham outside in the darkness of night and telling him to look up at the stars and count them if he could. Impossible. There are so many of them. Still, God goes on to say that to the childless Abram, this is how many descendants you will have. What Isaiah is saying to the people as they seek to follow God is that the story of God's faithfulness to Abram and Sarah will serve as a reminder, sort of as a meta-narrative and a touchstone at the same time for how God works in the lives of God's people. God uses stories just like we use stories to remember God. Isaiah says that God will bring comfort, that God will take the wild nature of the wilderness and transform it into a peaceful garden. God teaches the nation of Zion about how to bring about justice. God delivers and saves them so much so that when they have seasons of uncertainty and waiting, all they have to do is look to the rock and the quarry and remember the stories. So I wonder, what would it be like if we took these words from Isaiah and considered them for ourselves? If we, who are living in a time of deep societal division and great environmental urgency, and in a season when the rights of our LGBTQIA plus siblings and women are being rolled away and histories of those oppressed are being withheld or rewritten, what if we were to do this? What if we were to do what God bids Zion to do? What if we were to look to the rock and the quarry and remember the stories. This is one of the reasons we come to worship. To hear the stories over and over again, to hear them so often that the promises that God makes become written on our hearts. To believe them in ways that give us good courage. We will get through this. We will return to days that are filled with hope. There are many hard things in our lives, in our personal lives, and in our corporate lives together. So it is good to have these stories of God's people that we hear time and time again. Noah and the ark, Jonah and the whale, Adam and Eve in creation. We hear them again and again and again. And we remember that God works in ways we do not understand. So we can be reminded that it is the call to those of us who follow Jesus to speak and to act and to stand up in the face of injustice and oppression. Look to the rock from which you were hewn. 
and the quarry from which you were dug. Remember those who have gone before, the spiritual ancestors, both of the faith, of your faith, and of our faith together, of our life together. It's worth noting that we will not always live into or up to the patterns that were set for us by our ancestors. And if we need a reminder of how that can happen, we just need to look at the gospel lesson today. Jesus first asked the disciples, who are the people saying that he is? What's the word on the street? And then he turns the question and he says, who do you say that I am? And first one to get it right, ding, 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 is Simon. You are the Messiah, the son of the living God. You know, there's always that person in a classroom, isn't there? <laughs> and Jesus acknowledges Simon is right, and he praises him. And then, and this is important, then Jesus says to Simon, Jesus tells Simon who he is. Simon has told Jesus who Jesus is, and then Jesus tells Simon who he is. You are Peter which means rock. It was a great wordplay. And on you, on this rock, I will build the church. But have a look. This is chapter 16 in Matthew. Peter, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Jesus, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. And then, ten chapters later, Peter is asked another question, this time by an attendant in the courtyard near where Jesus is being prepared for crucifixion. Weren't you with Jesus too? They asked Peter. And Peter responds, I don't know him. And then he repeats himself twice. Three times Peter denies knowing Jesus or following Jesus or loving Jesus. Peter, the rock upon whom Jesus would build the church. If we are looking to the rock from whom we are hewn, beloveds, let us also look to Peter as well as Abram and Sarah. We will not always get it right. We will say things that we wish we had not said. We will make poor decisions. We will hurt people we love. We will do things and leave things undone that cause pain. But thanks be to God, our salvation does not depend on us and our capacity to get it right or not every time. Because of God's deep mercy and because of the hope of the resurrection, we are saved by grace through faith, not because of anything that we have done or left undone. God calls us to listen and to look and to believe that God has never left us. Even when we thought our dreams and our hopes were in vain, even when we were living in seasons of uncertainty, signs of new life, and new birth are everywhere. And we are asked every day, who is Jesus? Who is Jesus to us and why does he matter? Maybe it's as easy for us to answer as it was for Simon. You are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Maybe Jesus is healer, teacher, friend, companion, who do we say that Jesus is? Your transition team has begun the very important work of inviting you into conversations around who Agnus Day Lutheran Church is. What is your story? Who are your spiritual ancestors? To what has God called you and to what is God calling you still? What is your mission and your purpose? How have you grown? Where are you still growing? In this season of change and transition and anticipation, allow this question 
that Jesus asked the disciples to be a part of that conversation. Who do you say that Jesus is? Because although Simon was the first one to answer, Jesus never said that Simon is the only one upon whom the church will be built. Christ's church is built on each one of you, of us. To borrow the children's hymn, the church is not the building or steeples. The church is people. Dear ones, remember the stories of your faith journeys. Be encouraged. Know that God is doing a new thing in Christ's church through you and in you. Believe that the stories of God's faithfulness that guide and fill us are still being written. And if you need a reminder, go out and find a rock and hold it in your hand. Feel its firmness. Or go outside at night and look up at the stars and count them if you can. Because they are as numerous as the descendants of a man and a woman who were once childless. And believe that God is with you. Thanks be to God. And let the church say, Amen. Amen.